Hello, and in this video, we are going to expand on what we know by talking about counters. In the last lecture, we talked about timers. Counters function very similarly in the sense that you have to create system block, uh, data blocks and, and you have to, um, there are certain conditions that an output bit will be turned on and it depends on the counter type. But, you know, unlike timers there's only three basic timers in um the ti portal so there's no legacy counters it's all the same and you can either access it by using um the question mark box here that will bring up random things or over here under counter operations under basic instructions so either place you can pull up your timer so if you know your your three counter types and in uh, Siemens, there are three different counters. There's a count up, which is CTU. So I'm not talking about the, the TV show 24. I'm talking about counter up. There's a count down, and this isn't the final countdown. Sorry, um, this is just means it's going to count down. So this one here will start at when you start at zero and count up until it meets the preset point to then turn on an output. This here will you will load a preset and count down, and when it hits zero, it will turn on um, an output. And then you got the hybrid of the two, the count up and count down. Um, in some uh, programming languages, you don't have this luxury, and so you actually want to keep a consistent total of a count up, count down. Well, this one will combine the two, and you have the same functionality uh, as both of them put together in one um, command. So you don't need two commands, you can do it all in one. And we're gonna walk through each one to show you how they work. So what I can do is just click and drag over my counter. Now automatically it's going to say, hey, do you wanna create a data block for this counter? You can, or again, you can create a, a, a data block over here on the side and I'll do that again just so I show you. But I'll call this counter two, because I already did a counter one earlier. And now it's created. And here you can see, here's my count up. So this is the conditions that will make this counter count up one. Now here, keep in mind too, you can have this count using sing single integer, double integer, just INT, or, um, simple integer, integer, and et cetera, et cetera. So there's other different ways you do this. I'm just gonna keep this as integer to make it easy. Um, uh, here is the reset command. Here is the preset value. Now you can put in any old value here, but one of the things you could also do if you wanted to is you could put a memory word in there and so that this preset could be drawn from another function somewhere else. So if in an automated system, sometimes you want to be able to vary your preset for your counters to do something. Well, or for instance, when we start using uh, HMIs, you can't just directly put a preset in here. You need to first put a memory word and then change that memory word by using your HMI. But for this instance, all I'm gonna do is put a five in there or a three, I'll put a three in it so it's easier. Now, when we have three dots here, we don't have to put anything here. But again, we can put a memory word in here and whatever the current value is of this timer, it will be put in this memory word. So this has some functionality. You don't have to put anything in this current value, but if you want to use it in another um, program or an HMI, you will need to put a memory word. Now, here's a reset. I can put in a bit command here, and I can say make this input number two. And then here I can put in input number zero or, or input number one. And when and what happens is, is when this goes true, it will count up one. And then once the count hits three, it will then turn on your cube bit here. And again, you can either put in an out uh, put in an, an output energize over here. So output one, or again, like you can in timers, you can put in counter to, if I can spell, counter to 
and here's my Q, um, uh, in this case, the Q up, because this is the counter up, so this is a Q up, um, and turn on another light. So I'll just highlight both of those so that you know how to use the, so I'll put an amplifier. So there it is, there's a basic counter operation. I'm gonna compile and then download, load, and I'll start, and then we'll go online to check it out. And you can see when these are fall, so this automatically starts at zero if it's because it's if when it goes from because it will go to zero. Um, be careful. Sometimes it might if you're having this draw from other areas, it may not reset. Just you know, good practice is always reset your counters when you first. Um, are doing something new or set it to a state that's always the same so you can keep things um, safe and runs and predictable. So here's my input one, input two. If I toggle input one, you can see now in both the above the counter and then the current value that goes up to one and then it goes false. And now this is only detecting when it changes from true, is false to true to count. So that's nice. So if I leave this on here, um, it's not going to keep counting. I will show you why that may be a problem if we do an add command. This is why we have counters because it won't keep counting every time this goes true. But now since this current equals this preset, you can see that this Q output is turned on. Same down here, counter 2.QU. This output is now turned on. And if I want to reset it, and I can even reset it with this output on because the reset is dominant over the counter up and right now since i haven't changed the state of my counter my counter input it's not counting while it's on you would think well this is true it's gonna count up no it's gotta recognize that it goes false first before before it will count again when it goes true so be keep that in mind so if your counter isn't counting it could be because your reset is still on or you haven't changed the states of the input conditions in some way. So now I can keep going. And I, if I hit reset, now it reset. Unlike a timer, or just like a timer, if I do a reset before it hits the, its you know, preset condition, it, it's going to reset. Um, unlike a timer, though, uh, if my initial conditions go false, it won't lose count in any way because that's the purpose of a timer, to keep count, and you can see it go up and go down. Hooray, it's wonderful, sweet. So I'm going to reset it so I turn my lights off so I don't have an issue the next time. And so now I got a zero in the current value, three in the preset, and I'm gonna go offline. Now, I can do a countdown, I could drag the countdown over and then set everything up and it'll create everything, you know, or, Or I could come up here and hit the here and the in out and then just type in CTD and it will pull up the same way. But we've already kind of done all this. All I'm going to do is just go in here and change this to a CTD. And now you'll see a couple things. Count down, load, preset value, current value. Well, current value works the same way. It's going to just keep track of what's currently in our counter. My count down works the same way as the count up, except instead of adding one, it subtracts one. But the load is a little bit different. Um, if I want to, tr and I'm just going to tie that there. In a reset for a counter up, what does it do? It takes whatever is the current value. So in its... CTU, the reset takes the CV and changes it to zero. Right. But in a CTU, it takes the current the current value and changes it to the preset value. So this is the reset, 
and this is a load. I know that. So CT. So in the C, the count up, the the reset takes a current value, makes it zero, and the countdown it takes a current value and make it your preset value. So here is my preset value here. Okay, because and then the Q will only go true when this equals zero. So let's see this in action. Now, one quick thing, I'm going to change this here to the to QTD because I'm looking for the QTD, not the QTU. Because I'm counting down, not up. So let me download. Yes. And let me go live. Huh. Why is my lights on? It wasn't on in my counter up. I don't understand. Well, that's because what did I say? The Q here on a countdown goes true when the count the current value of the counter equals zero. And if I toggle up one, it goes a negative one. So it's zero or less because in some cases I don't really care if it's negative. But now if I hit my load, everything drops and you'll see that the current value is now three. And when I hit input one to go true, it subtracts one. And now you can see it's at zero. So it could you could use this in an application saying, hey, I'm out, fill me. Um, if that makes sense. So here's my load. Let's see what happens. And now notice I'm not subtracting because once again, load is dominant over the countdown. And you so when you're working with a countdown, it's, it, and it's it's dealer's choice. Rather you count up from zero, hit a preset, and then and then then turns on a cue, or if you count down to zero, and then if and once zeros hit it turns on it on the queue the output it's really up to the deal it's up to you it depends on the application both are in your toolbox and for those of us that can't decide very well they siemens has the count up countdown so let's show you the count up countdown again this is my, this is a load but i'm going to move this up to my just because it makes my life easier a count up countdown I'll add one here. Counter to move over and here's my count up just to show you how all this works. I'll put four, why not? And so now here's my preset value. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so I can illustrate the point. Here's my current value. But now it's saying we're, you know, count down. Well, this is an output Boolean. And I can make, you know, so I have it down here. But let's show you here in the function block. Uh, I could add an output. Now, again, because it's got three little dots, I don't have to. Um, I don't have to put anything up here in the count up either. Um, and just to sh show you that, I'm just going to delete that just so I can show you. they will turn on down here if I need them. But I don't have to have anything over here. You could just use it to keep track of stuff and not utilize the cues in anything. But here's my current value, my preset value, and my reset. I'm going to change this to four. And I'm going to change and put in input number three here. And this is how the counter up count uh, C, C T U D works. It's going to overwrite, and now I can go online, hit run. It's going to go to run mode, and so now here we go. So right now, what's our our counter is reading three, and that's our current value. And I can toggle, if I hit the input one, 
it counts up one. And if I count down, it's counting down. And then I hit zero, and then look, look at the output. Boom, there it is. But my preset value is five. I can reset it. So that resets to zero. Well, that's not a good example. Let me load. I just load, but now my Q is my Q U is turned on. Now uh, I might have to play with this a little bit um, here because it might have some funky old programming. So um, and plus I'm confusing myself. Let me just go in and just delete this. But here's my output one, and I can put output two right here. I usually program this way because it makes more sense to me. I was just trying to do something. I know in my luck, I probably did it, but. So hit view. So here it is, it's up because the preset value equals current value. So my count up and my Q U is live. If I hit reset, notice my, my output two is on because it just took the current value and so went to zero. Now both of these are false. So now I can just add, add, subtract, add, add, subtract, and if I hit the load, uh, the, imp, uh, the, the reset, if I hit the load, it's loading. So I think it's, in this case, here's my load, hit reset, reset is still down. It looks like reset is still dominant. So reset load. So if I hit both false, it's there because the load was there. And if I count up, it's going to not count because it's still loading that five. But now I'm here, I can go, keep going up. It doesn't matter. It can keep going up as high as I want. But notice if I hit load, it's taking it back down to five. If I hit reset, it takes it back down to zero. And I can subtract them, blue in the face. And I can hit zero, and it still goes there. And now when it's between zero and five, it's both are off. So use these tools at your discretion. So depending on your application, you might want to use this. You might just want to use a countdown. You might just want to use a count up, but this is how it works. The, the conditions to count up, conditions to count down, a reset, current value to zero, load, current value to preset value, and you can have memory words for current value or preset value. Thanks for your time. Hope this has helped you become better with Siemens.